looking to just try to wave clear here and push in the tower, getting that free gold. Another buff stolen from, a, stolen away from IP Fort Wayne, and this Kragus is just having a hard time. Ooh, nice uh, smite away there from Kragus though. This Gragas has had a hard time against Pernelix's Master Yi. Master Yi being 7-1-1 one, and one already. It's not even 20 minutes in the game. This is absolutely absurd. Finishing two items. He's almost four and a half. He's four and a half thousand gold ahead. No, no, no. He's almost, almost four thousand gold ahead. That's absolutely gross. This, this is this is what you have nightmares of in solo queue, where you have an enemy Master Yi that's 7-1 and one and has 160 farm by 20 minutes. And the Master Yi actually goes into solo a little bit ambitious there. Still picks up the Zig, but he's still alive! Uh, Fresh ending up playing, he's going to give his life for the cause. But overall, 2-1, to one, shut down on the Master Yi. So the question is, what can they do with the Alawi? Wait, how did the Alawi die? Oh, Alawi died in there too. I didn't even realize that. Bloody Red Road, what are you doing? You took the blast cone over the wall to kill yourself. Why? You're inting. Ugh. This is also what we have nightmares about in solo queue. Come on, man. All right, a little bit a uh, little bit slower game now as uh, as people start to reset these lanes and start to uh, take a little bit of a breather there. That is a lot of Voidlings taking out that blue buff. Malzahar is like, yeah, you got this. Does the walk away? Nautilus and Malzahar actually going top. Nautilus trying to, or not Nautilus, uh, oh, if she does, if she lives through this, she's gonna ult, the, uh, and here she's gonna just lifesteal through it all. Abs, I knew that was gonna happen. So when you pull the soul, that actually gives, oh, we'll talk about that in a second here. Three is actually about to go down. His life is so low, that last empowered auto attack from the Ziggs able to pick him up. So, but yeah, the problem of Master Yi splitting in the bot lane against the Gragas, and he can 100 to 0 the Gragas very, very quickly. He's 130 CS up and 6 kills. Oh, the ultimate coming down from the Nami, wanting to make sure... Oh, the headshot coming down. Ooh, the, that was, I think, the first real, like, hook that I've seen uh, really miss. I know he's missed a few more, but I really paid attention to. Um, Cheeky Nami stealing away that pink word. That's a that's a minion's worth of CS there of, of gold, buddy. Uh, another ocean dragon going uh, over to IU Bloomington. Doesn't look like they are going to be able to contest this one at all. So the question is. What does Fort Wayne do to get back in this game? Because you have you have this 5-1 Ziggs, and he can just wave clear and wave clear and not care. And he actually chunks down Caitlyn to below half health with just the Q and the exploding mines. That is not looking good for, uh, for Caitlyn here. Oh, that was very ballsy from Caitlyn. Red Team's turn to finish Ooh, the Ginsu's coming out from Master Yi. And whoa! Absolute deletion! Okay, here, here's something that you guys should know. If you're playing against an Alawi and she pulls your soul, do not fight her. She will ult and get extra tentacles based on if she has a soul and based on the amount of people around her. You have to dodge tentacles. And unfortunately in this game, nobody's dodged tentacles. Even the Master Yi who's ulting and has all this move speed, you have to be able to dodge those tentacles. They are very, very explicit when they are on the map. And another soul being pulled from this Alawi. And by the way, 
That was a two and five allowing. Oh, the nether grass planting and is the knock up the headshot and it's not gonna be enough. Oh, the voidlings end up picking it up. The Alawi does not have ult here. Uh, another hook landing onto this Nami. And oh, the center shot hitting Nami, ending her career. <laughs> And oh, another Q landing onto Caitlyn. She is dropped incredibly low here. Blinking health bar on the side here, and still wants to farm the jungle. I mean, all right. Just be careful, man. You might die. Nautilus shoving out the bot lane, but I think as soon as Alawi shows her face in lane. She is, uh, or, uh, Nautilus is gonna back off here. Yeah, she probably has, she has ultimate up now, so. He, uh, he knows he can't really stick around. Oh, the Master Yi, Red Smite, Flash, Gun, and... Gun down. No pun intended, since Lucian's the Gun Master. Ooh, looking to try to pick up the Ziggs here. Not actually able to land that nether grasp. I think if three on that Malzahar would have altered their uh, flash there, I think we could have done Ooh, barely dodging that. See, they're learning. Good. <laughs> they're dodging the tentacles. And th this is that that honestly has been a problem for everybody. Nobody has been respecting the fact that even though she is two, she was two and five. She finished Black Cleaver and Death Stance. That already spells trouble. And oh, and you have to break this chain. Just walk out of this chain. No, don't go back into it. Oh, taking so much extra damage for free. You really got to back off when she pulls her soul. Ayu Bloomington actually took the gold lead, I didn't even realize. They're up by 400 gold now. Uh, top lane's ahead by a small margin. Jungle's ahead by a huge margin. But the bot lane and the mid lane is where Fort Wayne actually has most of their gold sitting. The question is, ooh, uh, with this Executioner's Calling, is Caitlyn actually going to be able to make a dent in this Alawi? Dodging the tentacles perfectly fine. See, Alawi doesn't get any help for it if she dodges the tentacles. The engage from the Nami there and dodging the explosive cast with that Q. That was very, very well played. Pernelix dodging the Q and it's not gonna be enough. Oh, the body block. Very, very well played from Exorcism, saving Master Yi's life there. Two more calling shots and he would have absolutely died. So very, very well played from this Nautilus. And very well played as well from the Ziggs. Ensuring that, again, she does not go down to Master Yi. And that's been quite a few times he's actually had a near scrape with death against Master Yi. Who, by the way, is 10-3 if you were plucking. So that's, that's quite impressive, especially for someone as squishy as Ziggy is. Oh, here comes the ultimate. As soon as they get in range, there it is, the flash ultimate coming out to make sure that she gets 4x tentacles sitting around her. But they do back up. Very good, uh, very well played from them. Uh, they do pull him, so he does take all that extra damage, and he's going to die. But it does not matter, because I believe that she should go down. Yeah, she does go down. See, this, that's how you're supposed to play it. Unfortunately, they went in just a little bit too early back on the re-engage on her, and her ultimate was still up. Nautilus taking way too much damage there on the, on the back side of that. But, uh, three dragon coming out from Ayu Bloomington off the back side. They do trade a tower for it, um, but I believe that the 8% extra 
the 8% extra damage across the board is going to be very, very useful. Especially since the gold is so even right now, even after that tower take. So having those permanent stats over having a temporary slight lead, I would say, is um, arguably much better. Bloody Red Road just continuously pounding away these towers. I mean, he hasn't necessarily had the best game this game. Oh, is that hook gonna land? Oh! Deathfire Touch is... Oh, I knew it. Deathfire Touch, unfortunately, finished off Caitlyn. Dodging the Thresh Hook, but the AoE from that Ziggs Q was enough to pick him off. Red buff going over to Lucian, trying to make sure that he can uh, stay relevant in this game. Make sure that he can keep that uh, life steal and see if he can actually make as uh, much use out of it as he did last game on that hit. Nautilus uh, grabbing that Gragas there, and oh, the explosion! Oh, the spell shield from the uh, passive on that Malzahar. Another grass uh, finding a thing, calling coming down, but it does not matter. Nautilus doesn't give a damn. He just eats the calling to the face and says, look at me, I'm Nautilus, you can't touch me. Nautilus is absurdly tanky at this point, and he doesn't even have that much armor yet. They're actually starting up the Baron here. That is a lot of damage coming out from uh, Fernalix's Master Yi. We don't even need Caitlyn. They're just like, stay mid lane, we don't need you. That was, that was a very, very free Baron, not actually able to respond on the side of Fort Wayne at all. Master Yi looking to finalize, finally kill Ziggs. The great escape artist cannot escape a third time in a row. Red team's turret has been destroyed. So, Bloody Red Road looking to push down mid lane. Oh, the hook went wide. Thought he was going to dodge the other direction. That was a lot of damage coming out from this Caitlyn onto the Lucian. Red team's turret has looking been to just trap up that mid lane, make sure that no one can really uh, engage onto it. Using those minions very, very effectively. That flashback, uh, makes them a little bit... Oh, the Q oh, they trade kills! You know, that's actually not too bad of this situation. Uh, Master Yi is still alive, so they can easily use this engagement. And then other grass lands onto Malawi, and she can't use an ult, unfortunately. Dragus went down as well to the Master Yi, who is absolutely being unbelievably fed this game. And it looks like that is going to be an in him. I don't think they can take anything else. Maybe they can? We might be able to take it. No, no. They do have Baron empowered minions here. Master Yi does not care. He just doesn't care. No health, no problem. And the hook does land. But unfortunately, there's no follow up. Easy is almost going down by that tower. Culling coming out. And the move speed. From the not the zoning Nami ult is going to be enough to end the game. And the flash forward from the Master Yi, the Nether Grass landing from Malzahar again. And that is game. I am Bloomington tapes game two and actually a very, very close game. Uh, unfortunately the Master Yi was able to snowball at the end of that game, which really pushed forward into uh, uh, slingshotting them into the lead. Um, we will be right back with another best of three in just a few moments.
perspective, I'm the deepest in the cut. Everybody tuning in, but this is just for us now. We know I ain't bought it yet. Hoes wanna holler, oh no, I don't call them back. Girl, let me see you hold it down, we gon' have a blast. Cause I just wanna know what you gonna do with all of that. Ain't gotta say a word, I know what's up. You can have it all, watch me rip it off. I'll admit it, you got me feeling hella love. Even when it's going down, know that we gon' live it up. Young shot caller.
Hey, right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back to the first round action here at the IU Kokomo Invitational. Again, it's Andy Jokersturm and Aaron Yodroid Yoder. We are back here behind the desk. We are taking a look at IUPUI versus Ball State do, University. This should be a really exciting match. Uh, both teams uh, have a esports scene for the most part. So, uh, I don't know. I'm really excited for this, though. Yeah, it should, be, cool. it, should, it should definitely be a good matchup for these two teams. Uh, we do see the ba first bans coming out. That Eason, again, is being banned away uh, from from Ball State uh, by IUPUI. So, take it, taking away taking that away from Smart. Right. Yeah, that least in pick has been really important this entire uh, this entire tournament. Um, with the amount of map coverage he's got and just the uh, raw damage he can bring to team fights, it's been uh, either really key or banned straight away. And I think banned is probably the way to go for a lot of these teams. Yeah, absolutely, especially if, they, especially if they don't decide to first pick it. Uh, they do. Uh, then Ball State takes away the Kha'Zix. IUPUI will actually take away the Lulu as well. Uh, so. And we're starting to see some more of these meta picks coming out, and more than meta, there's somewhat meta bans from these teams taking away very strong champions like the Kha'Zix, like the Luke. Yeah, which I mean, I, I think is still pretty important, you know, even though there probably are strong picks that they could ban away from specific players, um, banning the picks that are more meta is probably the best way to go, like uh, banning the Syndra, for example. Um, Especially if uh, you're looking for more of a, uh, a, a non-mobile AD carry, um, banning away the Syndra is going to be really important because I, you don't want her to just walk up and delete your carry. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, just having basically uh, always an another way. Button, uh, just with the ultimate is a good is a good call. Now the Nami is going to get taken away. We've seen a lot of Nami being played today, especially with other, which is a yeah, it's an interesting thought, especially with other uh, supports that are up, like the Karma. Uh, Lulu's been up in a lot of games as well, but teams are going with the with the Nami, uh, deciding instead on the sustain and the disengage oh, that she can bring along with that catch potential. The final ban is going to be Fiora. So we'll see what IUPUI decides to pick up in the first rotation. Looks like it could be that Caitlyn. Yeah, the Caitlyn's going to be picked up, which it's been a very consistent pick this entire, uh, this entire tournament. Uh, uh, with the, the amount of long range poke that you have available, if you max the Q, it does a lot of damage. Uh, the Pilter of a Peacemaker, uh, it does a lot of damage from a fairly safe range. Uh, and so it's something that you can you can sit on and scale and try to build yourself up. And you don't have to put yourself in those risky positions where you're stepping out ahead of uh, your support and, and uh, stepping too, mar too far past uh, the river. And, and also has fairly reliable escape um, with the uh, 50 caliber net, being able to slow somebody and continue running on. So uh, I, I think that was actually a really good pickup. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what Ball State decides to uh, choose in response to that. Uh, they they did uh, they did actually decide to go. Uh, the Graves was picked up. It looks like Oriana is picked up right afterwards. Uh, and this is actually there's a couple minds of thought behind picking Caitlyn uh, behind first behind a, a Max and Caitlyn. Uh, you definitely can pick something that has uh gives you the wave clear like the piltover peacemaker but we're also seeing a lot of keelets actually max their traps and, and go with the trap max first the reason being is that as you increase the as you max your your level in the traps the headshot damage off of the traps actually scales up with the levels and with the levels in the skill as well 
and then being able to spam out the traps more for less mana gives you more control over the landing phase. So we'll see what uh, 7 1298, we're going to call him 7, what 7 decides to do here in this game as he did pick the key lane. His partner, her partner, her partner in crime, is going to be the Vi in the jungle here for Dur Durls. And Ari is also picked up in the mid lane. Yeah, the uh, Vi pick has been, it was really important, uh, I think, two, uh, two sets ago. Uh, when we had, it was another IU team actually, it was uh, B, uh, IU Bloomington, um, picked up the Vi, it was extremely effective for them, they were able to uh, dive in on pretty much anybody, they had a lot of uh, single target assassinate, right, and so it worked so well, well with the comp being able to uh, maneuver around the map so fast. Uh, to cover these real quickly, we do have Irelia being picked up as long, uh, along with Janna and Ari. Uh, for the side of IU, PUI, and for the side of uh, Ball State, we have the Karma pick that we were talking about earlier, along with Ash, and uh, we'll see what the top lane pick is going to be. Yeah, the Karma Ash, again, it's, it's, is a very strong lane. We've seen numerous times, brings a lot of wave clear to the table, uh, allows for that, for that control in the bottom lane, but the Caitlyn Jenna, that's a classic bottom lane that we've seen numerous times over the course of the last you know six seasons six, seven seasons that these champions have been in play. And having having that Caitlyn Janna, lots of safe, uh, lots of safe wave clear and the shielding the shield as well, uh, increasing the attack damage. Uh, it's gonna, gonna allow um, the Caitlyn to be able to farm easily at range and to keep Ash uh, just to keep Ash back and continue to harass. Looks like it, it will it be, will be a Poppy locked in here for Ball State. So it will be Poppy versus Aurelia. Which can be interesting. Uh, Poppy will do fairly well into Irelia into the top lane using the uh, the shielding as well will help prevent Irelia from being able to dash in a lot. Yeah, no, and that's the that's the main reason that you would pick the Poppy, right? Is like to prevent the dash because the dash is where a lot of her advantage, right? You're not expecting her to come in, she just dashes in on you and then stuns you. Uh, this way she'll be, she'll prime the stun, obviously, and then, you know, attempt to dash in. And if she's not able to get in, it's going to throw off her attack pattern a little bit. And hopefully that gives you the, uh, the opening that you need to be able to either add in some extra damage or get away. Or, um, I mean, for Poppy, also uh, being able to, to uh, throw out the ultimate. So we are going to load in uh, here to the rift a little bit, uh, here in a little bit. Uh, three minute break, and we will be right back. Yeah, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere.
here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are loaded into the rift for game one of this best of three between Ball State University on the blue side, IUPUI on the. I've got. Excuse me. There we go. I've got Aaron Yodroid Yoder alongside me for this series again, and we have got quite a bit of. We got a pretty good matchup here so far. Some good drafts, uh, some good picks coming out from both sides. Welcome it's going to be very interesting to see if this pick style composition of Ball State will be able to take that IUPUI. Yeah, yeah and on IUPUI they have the uh, the disengage comp, right? And so they know that they're going to be uh, subject to a lot of dashes, a lot of um, gap closers, and they're trying to kind of mitigate that as much as possible. You have the Graves, which is also which is really good at being able to kite away from threats like that, on top of the Poppy, who is going to be able to fight. Buff it away. A lot of the um, uh, a lot of the dashes and that sort of thing are not going to get people directly out of the fight. Uh, so it'll be it'll be really interesting to see how uh, Ball State decides to deal with again the Poppy, the Graves, who's really strong, uh, and even the Oriana in the mid lane. So it, it's just gonna I think it's gonna be a refreshing match. You know, we do see Coolbird there sitting in the river brush, but he is spotted out by that ward. So just a little bit of mastery spam back between the two of them yeah it seems like uh these are, it's a lot more of a um a traditional setup than what we've seen in the past couple games where uh we had teams that were sort of trying to invade try to uh scout out other uh, uh try to see where the other team was positioning this setup they decided to just go for regular starts not really inter uh, too interested in uh what the other team is doing they kind of just want to get started on their own uh we can see graves is uh starting with the raptor camp uh, which is uh, an interesting start. We haven't seen that yet today. No, we've mentioned it a few times here before, uh, and it allows these junglers, especially someone with a high, a very quick, safe clear like Graves, to get himself level two fairly quickly. He has level two at the end of the camp. He'll be about two and a half after he finishes red buff, and then can easily either road to either go down into the bottom side of the jungle like he's doing now. Or we have seen some junglers go take that level 2 and go make a surprise gank up into the top lane. He does decide to go with the clear first, so looking to make his way down to the bottom side. Yeah, and it looks like, uh, so Vi's going for the full clear, right, which is going to put her down at the bottom side a little bit afterwards. Not quite at the same time, like, she's just going to have to be uh, a little more expedient when she's going through these bottom camps, because great side to, uh, Gank down here if the time is right. He'll probably just decide to back though, since his lane is shoved so far. So, or maybe he can he can take that opportunity to go get a little bit more vision on the bottom side and see exactly where Vi's gonna end up being. Yeah, we'll just have to have to see what we got. We got some good trading back and forth. Uh, it looks like that one is is more one out there by the side of Ball State thanks to the shielding uh, from Brickin. The shields from Janna are maybe just a little bit stronger than the shields from Karma, although the Karma shields will provide a bit more utility. Nice big trade up in the top lane. This is this ain't your mama's wet noodle fight. Shia surprised by Coolbird. They're going at it. side. That's going to be Coolbird picking up the first blood on Shia with that dash. And we saw earlier what happens when an Aurelia gets ahead in lane. We have to see if Shia can uh, make sure to avoid the extra damage and the continued trades and fights to get that Aurelia even further ahead. Another big trade here in the bottom lane. No summoners traded out. But a good start for IUPUI in the bottom lane. BSU takes the top. Yeah, exactly. And and you know what? I don't. The so the top lane matchup this time. Yeah, you're right. Like it's it's gonna be really dangerous if Aurelia starts getting too far ahead, right? Um, but the the great thing about having a Poppy is you can go full tank and not have to worry about it too much, right? Because we saw Fiora earlier. You have to try to build those damage items, and that means that you have to give up a lot of safety. Yeah, another again that teleport coming in from Coolbird, but he's gonna lose quite a bit of health. Shia is trying to get some more health back, but Coolbird is doing so much. Spark comes in for that gank. Oh, the stun up against the wall. Spark can he land the kill? He does. With the end of the line return, Shia's surprise baits in Coolbird just enough. Spark picks up that kill on the return. And we are back 1-1, one, one, and that's a great, that's how you counteract that from Shia. Shot. 
Lucky for Shia, uh, Spartan was on that side of the map. Uh, Spartan decided, that, hey, you know what? Uh, Shia's gonna need a little bit of help. Ran up and was able to uh, get that kill because of the fact that Coolbird was going so deep, so consistently, constantly trying to chase after those kills, which is exactly what he should be doing right now. Vision over there, there wasn't much of a way for him to uh, know that Spartan was gonna come in from that. So otherwise, he might have been a little bit safer. Yeah, so that was a good start. Shy is going to at least be able to get something back. He will have the Bobby Sitter here picked up. We're seeing this trade in the mid lane here, Aki and CLG going at it. Uh, Aki does have quite a bit of a CS lead over CLG. Being able to continue to shove the wave and force CLG to try to farm under turret. A lot of players do still struggle uh, trying to farm under turret, uh, even uh, especially with more man or uh, spell casting characters as opposed to the auto the auto attack damage characters like an ADC or, or such. Breaking plays a nice nice tornado on a dragon god save. They're gonna turn this around as Spartan is coming in for the gank off to the side. Breaking is taking quite a lot of damage from God save. The end of the line is gonna chunk out break. That's the that's the flash from Spartan. He picks up the first kill. God save and Dreyer are still trying to follow it up. The dash in, that's a double kill. Meanwhile, the mid lane, that's a huge dive. Who is Aki? Will pick up that kill and flashes away. It's a two for one trade across the map in favor of IUPUI. They do take the gold lead off of that trade, although it is only a couple hundred gold, but that's three kills early on for Spartan on that grace. That was a oh. fantastic play. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, it looks like uh, Durrells was attempting to really come in on that. Not able to quite uh, close the gap fast enough to uh, get a kill off for uh, themselves, but eh, they tried. They tried. It was, it, uh, he was trying to see if he could scout that out without vision there in that. Uh, in that rush, Shia and Coolbird again going at it, but Coolbird uh, getting the advantage and once again picking up that kill. He resets the blade dash, the blade search, and then dives back in on the Shia. Doesn't even have his sheen yet, just has the long sword and the health pot, but is still, or health crystal, still is able to pick up yet another 1v1 kill. Oh, well, got it now. Okay, sorry about the uh, mute there, guys. I'm back, though. Uh, yeah, no, uh, Shia keeps thinking that he can take these uh, small fights, but the problem is he doesn't have the tank stats yet just to be able to do it. He's only got the bombing center, uh, and I, on its own, flat health is not going to be enough. No, it's not. He will have to build up some more of that armor just to try to get uh, keep even against Coolbird. It's going to be a lot tougher that now, though. Coolbird does have the phage, or does have the phage finish stuff, and is looking to go towards the seal. Meanwhile, uh, Seven and Dreyer are kind of trading back and forth. Seven taking a little bit of, a little bit of more of the damage off of that. Thanks to the shielding from Karma, did uh, quite take quite a bit. We'll send Ash to send out that clock shot just to check, see if they can't find Durrells, make sure that they know they're safe to play aggressive. Peace. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and with the core up, actually, we see a little bit of an invade, invade here coming from uh, the side of Durrells, uh, trying to take away a few of those camps. Meanwhile, on the back line, it seems like uh, Spartan is looking for some sort of gank. He's got to clear out some of that vision first. Looking to, looking to try to take advantage and, and come back in and gank the bottom lane while the flash is open. Yeah, that is a, there's a two-man stack in the mid lane. Hold on, the big stun lands on a seven. Dreyer's going to try to land the root. He flashes forward to land it. He does get it. And that's a good flash in for God's sake. We'll pick that kill up. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, the charm lands. They're going to try. They're not going to dive this turret, unfortunately. Dreyer does not have enough health. But again, it was a good trade. The nice play from Dreyer. He flashes it to land the root. And then they pick up yet another kill that's going over to God Save on this Ash. This Ash uh, is now 1-0-2. Oh, we'll have, uh, has uh, a decent CS lead. We'll have a little bit of a bigger lead as well. They're going to start whittling down this turret. Uh, they're doing a good job to get their bottom lane ahead and, and keep them ahead. But they need that scaling component of the Ash to stay in play and stay in effect to keep them in the game. Yeah, and that's shown up here. I mean, in the uh, just the, the gold lead, if we look at the... Uh... Ooh, it looks like there might be some... Yes, yeah, Shy is trying to bait in Coolbird to a fight, but Coolbird is playing smart enough. Realizes that Shy got a little bit aggressive, did not decide he wanted to take advantage, uh, did not try to want to fight in. Blade Surge comes in, and Spartan looking for it. He does finally come in. Shy is down to about half health. Coolbird healing up off of, those, off of the ultimate. Just again, just some chunk damage out. 
forcing Fulbert away, but Fulbert playing smart and staying, uh, staying away from the aggressive Poppy. Meanwhile, Aki and CLG trading yet again. The Ignite goes down. The Shockwave is going to whip completely. Who is Aki will take down CLG for the second time here in the mid lane. That is a huge advantage for Ball State. That is a almost a 30 CS lead for who is Aki on this arc. Yeah, and I think that uh, CLG was hoping that the W be able to pull it back to himself and uh, that, that he could catch uh, who is Aki inside of it. Never but I don't think he was paying quite enough attention to his and, and with it just uh, just not it just wasn't quite there. No, it wasn't. But uh, the Dragon and Spartan are able to at least clear out the wave. Some missing pings going down to the bottom lane. They realize that Dreyer has rotated out of the lane. Uh, looking to make sure that Aki knows that he needs to play a little bit safer as who as Dreyer is was roaming around. Uh, 712 actually getting a good getting the scryers rush, getting looking at that extra vision, making sure it clears away. They're chunking Spartan away so much. Aki's doing so much damage already. He only has that lost chapter in the double doors, but that's still quite a huge lead, a huge advantage uh, right now over CLG in the mid lane. Yeah, and if you look at the uh, the blue side vision, it looks like they're starting to establish a line around the uh, dragon here at the top lane. Yeah, you know, Wolverine and like Shia are going to go after. Shia is going to throw the hammer down and ban Coolbird from continuing that fight, but that is a big ultimate that will be down. Who is Aki dives in, can't land the charm, but the turret will end up going down. The spirit rush out. Now Dreyer and Brickin trying to uh, uh, dueling here in the mid and the bottom lane a little bit. Here comes the teleport though from Coolbird, and it's going to be followed up by Shia just a little bit behind, but maybe just enough. They do just finish it up. Decides to go after seven, but ends up going after Brinkin, and Shia's taking quite a bit of damage. Here comes Martin and Turtles as well. Turtles hits Martin, chumps him down. That's a shutdown going over for Coolbird. God save is going to pick up the double. Shia's trying to turn this back over to Coolbird. He takes a lot of damage. Shockwave does land on the one. Shia will pick up that kill. It's a two for one so far. The charm lands on CLG, and that's going to be Coolbird dashing in. Seven will pick up that kill on the CLG as Brickin throws down the ultimate. Uh, disengage, heal the team. It's a three for one trade in favor of Ball State. That is oh, how the you charm lands on the Shia. Coolford goes on a rampage. Who is Aki is on fire on this Ari, and Coolford is just mopping everything up. Yeah, exactly. That was wow. That was a lot going on at one time. Uh, I, would you would you call him a Firefox? Then he's working better than that, though. A little bit. He is working yeah. a little bit better than that. Oh um, no, but that was that was a uh, extremely well executed counter gank uh, coming out of the side of BSU. Um, just everything about that. Uh, was was beautiful um, The fact that you know, they, they had the uh, counter teleports that came in uh, They were able to uh, understand when exactly Spartan was going to be uh, entering the fight and that actually allowed Durls to be able to sweep in and um, kind of Quash all of that that extra damage that could have been out for it uh, Spartan had to back off early which meant there was a lot less damage that was going to be uh, Put into the fight because he's been doing extremely well and they're, they're kind of afraid of a gank at this point from him yeah, and Spartan is pretty much the only one on the side of IUPUI with, with a decent amount of gold. There is a huge gold discrepancy right now. It's a 4k gold lead for Ball State. Uh, at 13 minutes, that charm is going to go just wide. Aki's still trying to find those picks, and very well as he should be. Yeah, and, and if you look at, uh, at the items that are being built right now, uh, we have an Irelia that already has the force built. Uh, Poppy is still working on uh, that Sunfire kit. Hold on, Coolbird has found God save. The stun is going to save for the time being. Dreyer's trying to land that route. He finally does. Spark ults and will get the shutdown over to Dreyer. God save almost gets deleted off the map by Coolbird, but the support from the support and the jungler. Meanwhile, Turtles finds CLG. CLG will hit the shockwave, but there's the vault breaker. His or the assault battery will take him down. Spartan will end up picking up the, the trade kill on the girls. Lots of gold going over to this, uh, to this Graves at 4-1 and 2. He is very far ahead right now. I, we should mention that this this is all going on in a in a uh, lane swap atmosphere, right? So, um... Aki ooh. dives in for surprise! And, and surprise, Shia! Surprise! That's a 3-0 oh, and 2 Ari that lands a charm in your face and will immediately take you down. And who is Aki in... Had, 
Aki and Kulberg have just been uh, just very much on fire on these champions, really knowing where they need to play and exactly how they need to approach each different situation. Aki continuing to look for those picks. Coolbird is using his advantage that he has to help his team out and trying to move it around the map at that point to make sure that he can get the rest of his team ahead even, uh, to help everything out. And continually, we're, we're seeing these teams that are finding a lot of success on these. Uh, oh, it looks like we are going into a uh, pause for a bit. Um, but yeah, no, we're, we're seeing these teams that are... Uh, we're trying to get some uh, technical difficulties sorted here. Uh, we should be coming back online shortly, though. So. So again, pardon, pardon us, us for this delay and for the, the pause. We are, uh, again, just trying to get the uh, couple of mechanical, uh, mechanical issues figured out here. But you know, while, while we have this pause, there's a 5,000 gold for Ball State. We're 15 minutes into the game. Uh, Coolbird and Aki have most of the gold uh, in that advantage. They also have big CS leads as well, especially Aki. Yeah, I know. So we are, we are loaded back on, we are loaded back onto the rift and uh, the overlay apparently has been, uh, is uh, placed around, around. It is it actually Ball State, State on the red side, I I U I on the other side, side, which does, does which does make sense, sense. As, we, as we see. Uh, Rick, yeah, Rick does have the I U P Y tag, so uh, we have been incorrect in calling that. We apologize, but meanwhile I U P U I then actually will go and take the. The first dragon of the game it is that ocean drake. Aki's gonna try to find CLT. He does land the charm as well. Dashes it. There, girls comes in. We'll secure that kill. Dreyer has to flash away, and that's, there's gonna be no more coming out of that for now. But again, that is IUPUI. We'll pick up that first that kill, that pick, and the first dragon, and they've got themselves that five k gold. Yeah, again, it's these single players that are putting their on their back and being able to do so much damage. At this point, getting hit by a charm is like being hit by a truck. Because not only is it doing a lot of damage here with everything else, and your team could just pile on top of that one person, effectively turning a fight into a uh, 5v4. Yes, and now, now IUPUI has actually picked up that... Uh, the Rift Herald, I believe that it could have gone over to Coolbird or, or, or Durls. I'm not sure which one is. Aki dodges out from the Shadow uh, Crystal Arrow. Coolbird dives in. Durls gets stopped up. And Coolbird is going to get focused down. He will be taken down as he's trying to take down the Ash. Meanwhile, Durls gets focused down and Shy of Surprise will pick up his uh, will pick up a kill for himself. That is a 2-1. 712 is actually going to get hit by the shockwave. That'll clear away the minion wave for just a little bit. But we'll do enough damage to really force 7 or breaking away from that turret. I got down to half health, but that's two kills picked up for Ball State. Yeah, and see, because for a bit there, it seemed like uh, Ball State was going to be able to take down that mid turret, right? They had just gotten two kills in the mid lane. Probably would have been 
fantastic. Except for the fact that on the bot side, you had so much pressure from IUPUI, right? Because they had already sent down. They were they're running the split push. It's, just, uh, it's just a three two, and it's it's since they're able to constantly be at Ball State's doors they can control the tempo and even though it seems like ball state has some control at some points they might win some fights really they don't have a whole lot to bargain with no ball state really they are aren't doing uh, they're doing decent in one position and that's that's martin on this graves he's got a pretty big cs lead he's also got uh, three more kills and another assist over girls the problem it the problem for ball state is that Coolbird and Aki are both really far ahead. Uh, Coolbird has the three extra kills, has the CS advantage as well. Uh, Aki has the three kills and uh, an assist of his own, as well as that 50 CS lead. He tries to land the charm on the God Save, and God Save has to flash himself away very quickly. Yet another summoner bird from just the ultimate. Now Shia is going to land on the Coolbird. He lands the stun. Spartan's coming up behind him, trying to slow him down. He cannot land the... Cannot land the slow just enough for, to follow up on a cool bird. Cool bird gets himself away. Uh, meanwhile, looks like here on the bot lane, they are going to be uh, the side of uh, IUPUI is going to be trying to seize this tower. To get too far, uh, their ADC does have red buff, which is going to be really fantastic when they're trying to seize down this tower. Oh yeah, they might be able to get it if they can focus. That was a lot of damage, forcing CLG uh, uh, down to half health. Landed the net, landed the headshot after it with the ace in the hole as well. Quite a bit, quite a bit of damage before CLG back away. That turret will be picked up. Aki will, will pick up the gold for that one. And yet again, that's the fourth turn of the game here for IUPUI. They are again 5,000 gold ahead. They're just continuing the momentum. Coolbird has found, fire, uh, found Shia up in the top lane once again, just trading back and forth. Now is the point where Shia is going to start to get tankier and can start to survive these 1v1 trades against Coolbird. The flash, the charm lands on a Dreyer as Aki will follow it up. The, the stun lands on it 7 12 on the backside. Dreyer will get taken down by Aki who goes on a rampage. Girls will knock up CLG. God save will go down to break it. Seven will finally pick up the kill on the CLG. Spartan has found Durls, but cannot land the, the um, can't land the Q, but does land the ultimate. Knock up on the shy of surprise. He's looking to tell he's looking to knock somebody out of the fight. He does. That's the that's Ari getting knocked out of the fight. Shia is going to just barely survive. 712 is going to, they're gonna siege down this turret in Sai UPY, but Spartan will get hit by the charm and the orb. All in yep. all, it's three for one in favor of IUPY, and they pick up the turret. Yeah, they couldn't stick around long enough to be able to take the inhibitor chirp. That's okay. They picked up a lot of gold for themselves. They've now increased the gold lead by seven uh, to seven thousand uh, from what was previously five thousand. So picked up another two thousand gold for themselves. That's going to itemize them perfectly. We already see uh, that uh, who is Aki is going to be up, who is four zero and four by the way is going to be picking up that uh, Rabadon's already has a Morello's, uh, which is doing wonders for them, um, and then uh, for. 712 will, has the runins it has the um has the uh, energized blade to build into uh be a rapid fire cannon uh and then uh for irelia obviously already has the tri trinity force is building into what will eventually become a uh ginsu's uh, right because that one now brings builds from a recurve bow uh yeah no uh, building that into a bork and uh, that's gonna that is going to be a huge spike for the Irelia. Being able to stick out to those fights a lot longer and chase people down, uh, even though they already have the uh, Cutlass, which is doing a great job for them. But once they finish the fort, it's going to be very difficult for BSU to do anything. Aki and the rest of IUPY setting up that death rush there, trying to find another pick on the seek they couldn't find Spartan. The charm did not land. They did not, they weren't able to take anybody from Ball State down. The dragon is up and it is an infernal drink, so these two teams are going to want to fight over. The charm is not going to land either. Aki and 712 actually doing a good job of zoning Spartan away, making sure he can't get into the fight. Shockwave is going to miss, but the, the enchanted crystal arrow will not. But that charm does hit. That's a shutdown onto the graves for who is Aki. They're going to try to back away. Coolbird and girls do finish up the dragon. Oh, that's reset city for Coolbird. He picks up a double. That's the dunk who will pick up God Save. Shia tries to knock a couple away from the fight, but he does not knock away Brick and or Ari, or uh, who's Aki, excuse me. Aki continuing to try to chase down. He will eventually pick up this kill, potentially. Here comes the, <laughs> the, uh, the 
Flash Cone over the wall, and Aki decides not to chase down. Shia, surprise, stays alive. But it's still a 4 for 1 with the dragon, dragon. the inhibitor the turn, and possibly the inhibitor for IUPY. Yeah, no, this will absolutely be the inhibitor. They have members coming up right now, uh, so they're just going to have to run after this. Most of them have uh, their down still, so they're going to want to get out. But that was still a fantastically executed fight, a beautiful turn uh, from the side of IUPY. Taking advantage of all the missteps uh, that uh, might have been made by BSU. Um, and able, they were just able to shut out whatever was going on. And I think the reason that uh, that BSU was even able to get as far as they did in that fight was because IEPY was busy taking down the bracket. And that was they did have two of the more further ahead members taking down the dragon ball. They tried to go for a surprise Baron. They, Aki tried to land a charm, didn't land on the CLT, but see, uh, Aki will get taken down by CLT, but Ball State, stay on the Baron. Here comes Ball State, here comes IUPY. That's a double kill for the RA. Baron did end up going down over to Ball State, but IUPY will pick up four off of that. Ball State just picked up just about nothing off of that. 712 may end up going down. He does. Spark picks up that kill. Duros is going to focus on Spark. That's the ace. They pick up Baron, but they lose everything for it. They only pick up one kill on, on the return. Ball State tried to make a good play, but unfortunately, they're just too far behind. As soon as IUPY caught it, it was they were done for. And honestly, they didn't have enough ward coverage in, in the uh, topside blue jungle. They, there, were just, just, there was nothing there, so there was... They couldn't, they couldn't prepare themselves for what was going on. So, uh, either way, they still got the Baron, which was nice. It keeps it away from uh, IUPY, keeps them from being able to really shove into the base. But at this point, they're going to need uh, a lot more if they're going to actually pull out a win here. Yeah, they will. Now, IUPY will fall away, fall back after taking that top inhibitor turret. They also take, they will take away the red buff as they do go back uh, and recall, picking up some more items and getting ready to finish out the game. Vi has picked up her own Trinity Force here, about 25 minutes in. So Vi is going to, uh, girls on this Vi is going to be very strong. The, it looks like that's going to be uh, Cool Bird picking up, you know, picking up the, the armor, the health. Will be start to get fairly tanky as well. Having that extra HP from the Trinity Force, having the HP and armor, looking towards that Randuin's Omen, looks like, for Cool Bird. So, doing a good job of keeping himself healthy, keeping himself tanky, making sure he can't get taken down fairly easily, if at all, in these fights. But, speaking of not getting taken down at all, who is Aki is still 7 0, and we're 25 minutes in. Yeah, 7 0 and 9, I think so far, is the best KDA we've had. Uh, it's very close to it, yes. Yeah. I think we had a really impressive one earlier, but uh, yeah, no, it's 7 0 and 9 is fantastic. Uh, that IUPUI is doing so well in the first place. Yeah, and having Aki so far ahead on a tank is obviously very comfortable on really helping out with one of Schoolbird just chunking away giant surprise lasers, time to come on us. Who's Aki dodged out the shockwave? Uh, yeah, that's not the arrow and the shockwave. Meanwhile, the reset comes in from Janna. Spartan is going to get taken down very low. Gets dunked on. Aki goes legendary. This could be reset city for Aki. He finds a double. That's not going to be the trip for him. That's going to be 712 is going to pick that kill up. Coolbird will pick up the other one. That's two kills for Ari, two kills for Caitlyn, a kill for. A kill for. Uh, for a, a, a kill for everybody, basically. The Nexus turret will be killed as well. The Nexus will go down. IUPUI will take game number one against Ball State in 26 minutes. That was a fantastically executed game from the side of IUPUI. They were able to to command themselves around the map with with such just 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 so well. I don't even have words for it. They they were able to move around the map so quickly and with so much finesse that they were able to put their will on the map with a, for without BSU saying anything about it. Yep, they do take game one here of this best of three. We're going to take another quick break, and we will come back in to game number two of IUPY versus Ball State. 
and see which team moves on, which team will take the, which team will move on, which team will get the victory. We'll be back in just a couple minutes.
All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are back onto the rift here for game two of IUPUI and Ball State. The teams did not change sides. IUPUI uh, is going to be on blue side. We Ball State decided that they out. want to stay red side. They want that last they, pick. It didn't, didn't quite, quite work out for them in the, in the first, first game, but we'll see if it can work out for them here in the second game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll see if they, see if they can, can maybe, maybe screen, screen, switch, switch strategy a little bit. I think what they tried last time was a little bit too docile. Uh, maybe they'll try something a little bit more aggressive this time and be able to make the plays that they were hoping to make with that Graves. Um, maybe speed up the clear uh, and try to get some early ganks off. Because we didn't see really any ganks coming out of the Graves until uh, about five minutes or when it was a rescue gank. Um, when he happened to be on that side, it didn't seem like they were really planned. Maybe they can try planning around those uh, around the jungler a little bit more to try to get either bot lane or mid lane to start snowballing for them. So they can get they can get some early towers, a little bit of an early gold lead, and that's one way they could consider attacking uh, IEQI. 
Yeah, yeah, they'll have to take a. They'll have to see if they can't take away some of the other picks. I mean, they did take the Aria away. They're also banning Syndra. You have to wonder if they're gonna leave Irelia up as well because Cooper just went off on that pick. They uh, they took the Aria away from who is Aki, which is probably the the best ban that they could have done. The only other option was to take away the. Uh, well, the only other option was to take away the Vi. Well, the only option they have left to take away the Vi or the Irelia. Right, because the Vi was also very strong in those fights. You know, he was able to jump on the squishies and just pop them immediately with how much, with how much armor pen or uh, the no armor shred back. that Vi offers. It was a lot. They are going to go ahead and take, take away, away the Irelia. Irelia. Yeah, they take away the Irelia, and that actually is going to be the first pick Graves coming in from IUPUI. So Durls does not want the Vi. We'll take the Graves away from Spartan. Uh, and now there's uh, there's a plethora of options that Spartan could potentially go with. They decide not to go. He could go with the Vi, but I don't know how much of a Vi player Spartan is. So he may look to go more towards the Lee, uh, Lee Sin, actually, is Bedway. He could go towards the uh, the Rengar. Uh, we could see another Ibram come out. But the jungle pool is kind of pinched right now for Spartan and Ball State. Well, he does have plenty, but we don't really know what's in his. Wow. Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's go. Let's We've go. got there Warwick go. being picked up. <laughs> and Warwick right. gets picked up. And Nobby will get picked up for Dryer as well. It's another one of these things. pick junglers, right? Like one of these junglers that's going to uh, just try to look for opportunities to get off good ganks. That's going to try to get his team ahead by getting himself ahead, right? Uh, I, I I like the pick. I think it's gonna it could turn out really well for them if they're able to use it effectively and get through the clear. It very well could be, but there also are a couple picks that uh, IUPUI could take that could counter out that Warwick, but they do go with the Lucian Janna bottom lane, a ve another very strong 2v2 lane for IUPUI. You throw the shield onto the Lucian, he's able to uh, get the, uh, the double auto attack from his passive. That's a lot of extra damage being put out onto an AD carry in lane. Uh, and Although they will have to do that in response to the Nami, who's just going to be you know feeding back all that health. And they're going with a Caitlyn, uh, it would look like at least. Yeah, yeah. It looks looks like they will take that Caitlyn. They'll also take the Nautilus. At least they're hovering. It is picked, and we've seen quite a bit of Caitlyn. I think we've seen Caitlyn in almost every single game. I believe it has been every single game. Yeah. Either picked or banned oh, right. in this tournament. We've had a couple Caitlyn bans as well. And we've just seen Caitlyn a lot. She is very strong. Probably one of the top tier 80 carries right now. They could have. They could have gone with a couple other picks, but the Kayla is just so solid and such a safe pick. Yeah, exactly. You can sit back in lane. You've got a lot of damage from your auto attacks on on those headshots. You can you can harass from so far away, shooting people from downtown, and not put yourself in a whole lot of danger. You know, and and that's something the BSU is going to need. Ooh, a Teemo hover coming. Uh, from the side of IUPUI. Yeah, we don't talk about the hovers. Although there is a couple different hovers that are coming in. They're flipping back and forth, but that Camille actually could be very interesting. Uh, especially, it, it is going to get locked in, and the victor will be followed up. So that's a lot of 1v1 potential here from the Camille. It will be a very split push effective team. They've got a great four man stack in the Graves, Lucian, Janna, Victor, and then just letting Camille run run wild on the side lanes. IUPUI have a great 4 1 composition that they can really use to play the map to full effectiveness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there's a lot of mobility. Again, we're going to see this from IUPUI, I think, again and again. Uh, as as they continue in, uh, I mean, if, if they go on from this point, I feel like we're going to still see them moving around the map, being extremely mobile, trying to get all those picks off. Uh, they're looking for and snowball their lanes. That's definitely what they're doing in this in this match, at least. Uh, I mean, from and uh, from uh, Ball State, we do have the uh, we we've got the Nautilus pick, which is fairly safe. Again, it's going to be able to uh, lynch a lot of those uh, those those really needed uh, uh, picks, right? It's going to be able to set up a lot of those picks for uh, the Caitlyn, and we do have an Echo coming out, too. Uh, yeah, and that's going to be that's going to be the counter to the 1v1 in that against the Camille. That's another good four, uh, four-man stack here, also for Ball State. And then they've got the split pusher and Echo, who can easily build a lot of AP and then start to split push, wave clear, and start taking on turrets on his own. It's going to be a huge stack up. He does take he is taking that teleport, uh, so he will be looking to make that split push happen. 
uh, may not even look to actually teleport into the fight. Just keep the teleport in case he needs it. But it's going to continue to split. It will potentially split push and continue to push those side waves up. The rest of the team takes objectives around the map. We'll have to see if they can use this one one, -one style split push effectively against IUPUI, who are looking to do that 4 1 split push. We're going to load up into the rift. We'll take a three minute spectator delay break. When we get back, is IUPUI versus Ball State for game two. We'll see who takes the victory in this one. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, loaded up onto the rift for game number two of Ball State and IUPUI. IUPUI against the blue side, Ball State on the red side. We do uh, we start pause. off a game of the pause. Yeah. yeah. While we have this pause, let us reintroduce ourselves. My name is Andy Joker Sturm. And I side. am uh, Aaron Yodroid Yoder. There you go. Now, we, uh, we're we seeing a couple picks that we have not seen come out so far in this Invitational. Uh, the Camille in the top lane for Coolbird on the side of IUPUI. We've got the Warwick coming in for Spartan. 
and also the victor coming in for Aki. I am so excited, especially oh, the one that you didn't mention is the Echo, which I'm extremely excited for. It has so much uh, team fight potential that we haven't really seen out of these pick comps that we've been getting. It's been a lot of small skirmishes, uh, a lot of you know catch me out uh, sort of games that people are playing, and I think this particular game has a has a lot of potential for for these larger team fights. Uh, something that could, you know, you've got the Camille who can, who can initiate with the uh, ultimate. Then you've got Echo who can, of course, phase dive in. And I, I think it should be a very exciting set of games. Or, yeah, very, very exciting, exciting, exciting set of games, games. Yeah. 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 yeah? yeah, I mean, we did... It did go in favor of IUPY. They were able to get them ahead early on and keep themselves ahead throughout the rest of the game. And now it's going to be a matter of seeing if IUPY can keep that uh, keep that lead. Yeah, and I think for the side of BSU, what's going to be really important is making sure that they can be tracking IUPY as they move around the map, uh, keeping tra keeping tabs on where the jungler is, uh, making sure that Camille isn't leaving lane too often because Coolbert really loves to roam. After Coolbert is done with lane, he just kind of goes other places, and especially now that. Uh, and it's the uh, Camille who has an extremely high mobility, more than we saw in the Irelia. It's going to be a lot more dangerous. Well, Dreyer and Godsaved actually are going to look towards getting that level 1 cheese, trying to see if they can't maybe force uh, force some kind of summoner out of 712 and Bricken. We'll have to see what they decide to go to, but neither jungler actually starting on the bottom side, which is a very interesting start for these teams. Yeah, and I think that they're trying. They're they're gonna want to try to circle around the bottom, bottom side, side. Right. possibly get a gank, gank off if they can. can. Maybe end up backing after that uh, the last game they do on the back side. Uh, but every all the teams when they start off, these two teams in particular have been very safe in their in their starts. Right? It's always just form the line and hold. Yeah, we did see a bit of the variation that Piltover Peacemaker from God Save did miss. Uh, Dreyer actually did take quite a bit of damage here in the trade. Was doing a good job of zoning Bricken and 712 away though, and that's Bricken going down to blow half health. You see that mark over her head. That means that Warwick, if he is uh, within a certain range, will have bonus movement speed towards uh, towards Bricken at that point in time. Yeah, but man, who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Well, Bricken and 712 might be <laughs> once you get into the later stages of the game. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, that Warwick can start scaling and be terrifying considering you can like, jump like halfway across the map. It's not quite that far, but uh, that mm. ultimate has an extremely long range, and so it's going to be terrifying in a pick situation where you're low and out. So they're going to have to be traveling in packs for sure. Yeah, and especially with the bonus movement speed that can be granted from the Nami, that'll even that'll make it even bigger. Coolbird and Shia actually going to trade in on the top lane and trading in in the mid lane as well. Coolbird will get taken down fairly low, but Warwick is not around. He's actually on the other side of the map looking for this cheeky gank, maybe diving in. But they decide he decides not to go for it. He does get spotted out, but he's gonna try to invade. See if he can't find anything on that red buff side. Yeah, he, it looks like he's actually looking for Durrells on that side, trying to see, trying to spot him out and see if he can't take away a camp or maybe uh, get a good, uh, get a good jump on him right while he's taking blue buff or taking red buff. He's still just kind of hanging around, waiting in that, waiting in that bush though. He looks like he's spotted out by, uh, by. Ball state. Uh, Durls and Aki are going to try to. But Spartan is going to be able to take that red buff. Meanwhile, Dreyer and uh, are going to try to save. But Spartan is going to get caught out on the wrong side of the map. He's going to get his save. Three, Three man bubble is going to save. Trying to flash over the wall. Dreyer is going to flash that mastery symbol and just let him, let the team know exactly who he is. He saves Spartan's life. They were life running for their level. life there. Uh, there was there was no other option, right? So uh, you had Spartan who got caught out in the jungle. There were four people there, and I'm sure he was terrified. Uh, then you have Dreyer coming in with a beautiful save. Coolbird and Shire are going to trade. That's a lot of damage going down. Shire does not know against the turret. The first, the first blood goes, goes over to Coolblood on, on, on a great trade. We are seeing that shield coming in from her passive actually blocking a lot of the uh, help, a lot of uh, physical damage instead of the magic damage that you would assume that a Nautilus would be able to deal with his abilities. But he's dealing more physical damage right now, so she got that shield, but it's enough to keep her alive and take down Shire's surprise. Yeah, that was so close too with the dredge line he was like you know units off from being able to save himself it's gonna put him behind a little bit in the lane 
uh, tank items have, have, are still fairly inexpensive, but have gotten a little more expensive with the subsequent patches. So he's going to have to be playing a little bit safer and not shove out quite as hard as he's used to. Uh, that just means, you know, maybe maybe not riptiding the, um, the minions quite as much. I just suppose in the long run is going to save him in mana, so that's fantastic. But yeah, we do have just regular jungle, jungle pass uh, resuming. CLG looks like he is going to use his teleport to get back to lane. Which is extremely important. Uh, in order to keep up in CS with a victor, you uh, have to be on top of it. You really can't afford to lose, leave lane too much because there's so much damage you can put down. Under those minions, they continue to shove you under tower. Uh, CLG actually going in again on Oculus. Coming in now, Spartan will not have level six just yet, so he will not be able to go in. But Shia and Coolbert are trading again in on the top side. Just quite a bit of damage coming back and forth. Yeah, there's a lot of trading going around on the map. Shia continuing to shove those. Uh, ooh, it looks like he's trying to go in on Coolbert one more time. Won't really commit to anything too hard though. Uh, some gank action going down the mid lane, a little bit of uh, VM from CLG. He's not able to really do anything to provide to stop anything. CLG just kind of throws it out, but that presence of Duros in the mid lane allows the rest of all states to take that first drag and Spartan is able to take that. That is an infernal drake going over for IUP or for false state, excuse me. Coolbird and Shia going to trade up in the top lane. Level 6 on both. He's gonna get taken down. He tries to avoid the depth charge with his ultimate, with Coolbird's ultimate, but is not able to time it properly. The damage from that corrupting potion was so key in that fight, being able to burn him down over the extended trade that happened right before the dive in, right? Uh, and I don't think that Colbert was really counting on that. Uh, he thought, okay, I've got my sheen, I can just go in, it'll be fine. But the, I mean, the thing is, he didn't count on the shield coming through from Chaya Surprise and still being up. Wow, that's a lot of damage on 712. Yeah, Dreyer actually just missing that bubble. He had been able to hit it, but God Save was hitting quite a bit of those empowered auto attacks. Uh, thanks to the Tide Caller's blessing and the headshots from Caitlyn, just putting out quite a bit of damage uh, and really being able to chunk 712 out, and that's going to force him to fall even further behind in CS. We'll be able to get a little bit of a turret lead, damage lead on this bottom lane turret. But again, it's a one, it's one kill to uh, one kill to one uh, in favor of both the top laners, and the gold is even about eight minutes in. Yeah, there's, it, there's been a lot of uh, even trading back and forth, right? Uh, not very many ganks happening, so there's not a whole lot of kill pressure happening around the map. Both junglers have been fairly content staying in their side of the jungle, kind of waiting things out. Um, it's mostly in lane, it's been just trying to take small advantages. I'm actually very impressed that these teams are doing so well at keeping a ward line. Uh, inside their own jungle and trying to kind of push vision into the opposite enemy jungle. Ooh. Yeah, Coolbird dives in on Shy Surprise, that's about half health. Land at the outer ring of that that W, so he can't get the extra damage, but that's quite a bit of damage, and that's gonna force Shia to back off and have to play safe. His teleport will be up fairly soon, so even if he gets chunked out a little bit more, he'll be able to teleport himself back into the lane and not lose much. Spartan is going to go in. The ultimate is flashed away from Aki. Aki trying to land the stun. He does just to land a little bit more chip damage as Joros comes in, but it's an ultimate traded for a flash. Yeah, and that's the thing about the new Warwick, right? You have to make sure that it's going to land the skill shot now, uh, and it's able to be flashed before it was just a simple point and click, but now that it's longer range, uh, it's it's a straight skill shot so that was actually a really wise use of a flash out of who is aki I, if he had to flash that it's highly doubtful that he actually would have been able to make it. yeah most likely he would have gone down speaking of god save is going to try to put a bit of damage the exhaust goes down on a 712 release it back but the tidal wave will come in to God save is trying to put down the damage again. The exhaust went down onto Dreyer. They just really can't get through the amount of a healing that Dreyer is able to put out right now. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a stain. That's, that's 
That's really helping God send out in these trades. As 712 has the shield coming in from Brickin, but doesn't really have the same amount of sustain, even though it does have that cutlass. It's still nothing, it's still not as much as the Nami train, Nami save is. Now, cool we're doing it on the highest prize, again, landing that dive, landing that stun, putting in quite a bit more damage. Well, he's feeling a little more confident now than now that he's got his Bami Cinder build. Feels like he can take these extended trains of trade trains a little easier. Brick in there, burning his flash, not uh, to not get caught out by Shia Surprise off of that teleport. There's a four-man stack here in the bottom lane from Ball State. Looking like they're going to try to force down this first turn. Death Brick in. That's not the target exactly. Well, they're going to turn on it. Charles got saved. We'll pick up the first kill. kill but there goes the AI storm. It's going to pick up quite a bit of damage. He's got a guy standing there. God said, pass the net himself away. 712, try to dash it. And that's going to be the kill for 712. Thanks to who's Aki landing that death. Right. It's a two for it's a two for one trade in favor of IUPUI. Now they're gonna try to push down this bottom lane turret. Does anybody want any fish sticks? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't think that Ball State was really expecting a, a counter gank there, and they were expecting to be able to do more with the gank that they had. You saw the ultimate go down onto the uh, onto Brickin, right? But then they didn't follow it up. So it was a little bit wasted there. They could have used it to maybe chase out CLG when he came in, but they decided to uh, turn on him instead. And, all right, I think that BSU needs to step up their game if they're going to pull out a win. Yeah, I do like the fact that Shia Surprise was in the bottom lane, so CLG actually, rot actually rotated, used his teleport up to the top lane just to defend that top lane and, and not allow Cool Bird to get too much damage down. Shia will clear out that control ward, uh, but it's a good map rotation, good map play from Ball State to keep things somewhat relatively even. Uh, although they are down in gold, thanks to some CS advantages across the map, plus the kills advantages, the kill advantage uh, that IUPUI does have. Yeah, the gold lead right now is slightly in uh, IUPUI's favor. Ah, uh, Shia just missing that hook. Colbert though, gonna dive back. That, get that stun, get quite a bit more damage thanks to that W. But he's going to take a lot of damage in return because of that corrupting potion. Yes, he will. Now Spartan it. Spartan's getting caught by 712 and Brickin. CLG is trying to, uh, try to come in and run. Uh, interference, that's actually going to force out the, the ultimate. Colbert tries to go out again. Again, again. Colbert goes back in, even though he is very low health. Doesn't have anything to kill it. He's just able to survive, and Shia is starting to get very tanky. That's going to be Dragon actually potentially started up and going over to IUPUI. Brickin and 712 is trying to zone away God Saved and Dragon. They're able to do so. CLG looking in on the backside, maybe trying to dive in across the wall, but decides not to. They go over towards the blue, towards that mid lane turret, and that will be the, uh, their first mountain drake for IUPUI going over. It's a dragon, it's a dragon apiece, but it's a thousand plus gold lead here for IUPUI 13 minutes in. And they're pretty useful dragons for what they're trying for the thing oh, they're trying to do. Oh, Exhaust goes down under God's safety. He gets knocked up by the teleport as well. Seven times that's intentionally one on auto. It gets that kill. Durls throws down the, the collateral damage just to make sure that God Save doesn't get out of it. Meanwhile, it's like he's gonna go in and land the stun on Aki, and Aki can't stun him back. That's a big trade for CLG. Going in, uh, going in his favor. The bubble's gonna land on the 712, but just uh, there's nothing to follow it up. They're gonna be able to take the first turn of the game off of this. Yeah, with the uh, red buff that is sitting on uh, that is sitting on Jarl so far right now, yeah, they were able to chunk through that. And Dreyer flashed in Spartan now looking to, to dish, da put damage down on the girls. Here comes CLG. He's looking to land the stun. It only lands on the girls. The girls is killed up just barely. CLG dives in. That's 712 going on a killing spree. He's not focusing down on Dreyer. He gets him with the double, but not before he picks up the double. Now here comes who is Aki. Throws down the Canstorm on the CLG. That's one of my favorite damage. Aki will pick up and get another kill. That's three kills going over for IUPUI to get themselves even further ahead. Oh, and I think Aki is showing us exactly who he is. He's been so commanding on this victory this game. Being able to shove in repeatedly on CLG, forcing him to leave lane to try to take risky uh, fights in the outer lanes, and then being able to roam down whenever he sees CLG appear, and to keep, 
get those kills for himself. He is currently sitting at uh, 102 with 126 CS. Uh, he's already got his uh, nearly to the perfect X score. Actually, he is at his perfect X, X score already. So he's doing pretty well for himself. Yeah, he's got he's quite a bit ahead. Has that 30 CS advantage as well. He's he's doing a great job. Oh, oh Spartan tries to dash in onto girls, but just can't land the ultimate. He is gonna dive in, pop over the backside. Hasten the hole's gonna come out. Oh, oh that can't block my freaking. God, 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 God saved will pick up that kill, and that is who you need that gold on. Getting that kill for God saved is gonna at least keep him and the rest of the Ball State in this game. I'm not 100% sure that Bricken saw the uh, Ace in the Hole coming through and was just uh, preoccupied trying to peel Spartan off of uh, Durrells. So he did what he could, but in the end, I think it was mostly on Durrells for being caught out. You know there's a Warwick around, you've got the icon above your head, you need to get out as soon as possible. Yeah, that, that turret will go down for Ball State, so they start to even the gold out, they even up the turrets at the very least. Uh, but their 712 is pushing up this top lane. He'd already rotated over with Brickin and was pushing Shia Surprise out thanks to just the range advantage. They pick up yet another turret. That's more gold for IUPUI. 712 is doing so much work with this red buff right now. To be able to chunk through minions, chunk through towers, uh, and push his uh, way through. through. There's really nobody up here to uh, acknowledge this push right now other than Spartan, who is coming up to attempt to answer. The uh, push from 712. He's gonna get some good damage on it. He's gonna have to peel out of there pretty fast, though. Yeah, the bottom lane will start to rotate up to the top side. 712 goes out there, but he doesn't get God save. He doesn't get away from the tidal wave either, but will pick up the kill with the pull that gets the flash away from Spartan, saves his own life. And that's gonna be an, a nice pickup kill here for 712. Who's Aki looking to try to find Spartan? He actually steals the Krugs away with the death ray. Yeah, it wasn't exactly the cleanest kill in the top lane, but oh, Coolbird, Coolbird throws down, throws down the the ultimatum onto uh, onto Shia. Surprise, Shia is able to hook away. He lands the, lays the ultimate to knock up Coolbird as he dashes in towards the wall. The double flash is going to keep uh, Shia Surprise alive for now. Buzaki tried to turn on to see LG, but he can't make it. Coolbird dies in, but he's actually too far into the turret. He's going to get Kenny down. Shia Surprise can take a second lead off. Spartan lands the ultimate on. Does pick up the kill with it. CLG comes in as well to get that to actually secure it. Who is Aki's going to take the gate ace in the hold? The 712 will save it. God save will pull out the heal to save his teammate, but will end up turning around and get the shutdown on the 712. Freaking has to walk away. Almost gets stuck up. All state are starting to find their way back in this game. They're they're trying to get their way in there. See, they're they're taking all. They're they're finding the mistakes that I do. Stepping out a little bit too far, going out alone. And, and really capitalizing it by traveling to the group, making sure you can land those echo stuns, making sure you can uh, land the ultimates from Spartan, and being able to pick off those key members is what they really need to focus on, right? Pick up key members, take objectives, and then rotate to something else. And and I think that is what BSU can do. Hopefully they'll be, they're able to keep it up here. Yeah, now they're gonna take this Rift Herald. I believe it's probably gonna go over to CLG. No, Spartan is actually gonna take it himself. Not again, not a bad choice. Uh, he will be off on his own in the jungle, being able to uh, stay away and build up those void stacks so that he can come in and it, uh, his ultimate does apply the on hit effect. So if he lands the ultimate, is gonna deal quite a bit of damage off the first tick. Right, and right. he's gonna be running around so much, it's gonna help him with the jungle clear too. Uh, being able to sweep through those, through those really fast and it uh, essentially aid in the rotations around the map. So I think it was a good choice putting that on to Spartan. There are some calls heading over to Dragon though. We have two members of IUPUI lining up. Yeah, IUPUI looking to try to take this Dragon. They're zoning away Spartan. God's Spartan and Dreyer for now. It is an Infernal Drake. So IUPUI will want to out of the hands of Ball State. Here comes the teleporter. Well, Spartan is going to... But he's going to end up getting stunned. And they focus on the damage. He's going to heal up this bit. Meanwhile, see if he's his focus on the set. Girls will actually take down Spartan. Coolboard will take that Dreyer as well. Brickett is going to get knocked up by Giant Surprise, but he's going to get stunned up and pulled into the middle. IUPY focuses down, and they're able to pick up the fight and pick up the dragon. 
and, and that is a huge trade here for Ball State. They pick up four, they pick up the uh, the Infernal Drake as well, and now Coolbird is split pushing up on the top lane after using that teleport to get himself out of the fight. He got himself away from God's sake. So the thing in that fight that is interesting is God Safe was nowhere to be found, right? It was dove, in, uh, dove on by uh, Coolbird, right? Coolbird took off running, and God Safe was not able to turn back around and join the rest of the team fight. And these team fights could go a lot better than what BSU is is doing right now, right? They're trying to they're they're doing what we asked them to, and you know, cashing a couple people out, but. Rather than waiting for the perfect opportunities, they're they're taking opportunities that might not really be there. Right? They're almost being a little too aggressive. And yeah, we'll see. They they are being aggressive, but they are still behind, and that can really come back and and really hurt you if you're not aggressive at the right time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're four thousand gold behind, um, and that gold happens to be on to for one God save. That's where most of their gold is ending up. Who has the uh, Runins and the uh, Infinity Edge already built, which is great as long as you actually have God Saved in those fights. If God Saved isn't there, you're going to be hard pressed to be able to put down as much damage as IUPUI is putting down in the same amount of time. There's just so much burst coming out of IUPUI right now. Yeah, it's going to be fairly tough for IUPUI. It's going to be fairly tough for Ball State to finally back into it. If the Black Cleaver is actually picked up here for 712, so it's going to be ripping away even more of that and more of the armor. Rick in trouble. It's not, not going to get hit by the ultimate. Can he get away? He's not going to throw down the, his own ultimate. He's staying. He's going to go down on Aki. He's on a killing spree. That charge landing on the Aki is going to zone him away from the fight. Shy is surprised. He's going to get away. God save this one. Flashes away as well. Only has a health. 50 health, it looks like. So that's a good pick up here for why they're gonna look to try to go to the Baron as the rest of Ball State is very low. Yeah, I mean, if you can't find another target, just go for the support. Especially when it's something as squishy and rare. Uh, on the Nami, there's just not a whole lot there. You almost need protection of your own, right? And uh, when you have uh, champions like Victor or Lucian who can just pour out a lot of damage in a short amount of time. Those smart guys over the wall! And gets taken, taken down. down. I don't think he un he realized that the rest of IUPUI was still around the Baron pit with the jungler down. This is gonna be a, a little bit of an easier start here on the Baron for IUPUI. They are at fairly good health as well. A lot of wards into the pit for Ball State. They're looking to try to get the steal. CLG is gonna dive in over the wall and he's gonna get secured there by IUPUI and just backing away from the fight. Uh, who is Aki? Just, just remove CLG from the map. You didn't even see it happen. And that's yet two more kills for IUPUI, and they pick up the bear. Yeah, Aki picking up that second item, Lich Bane, has been so useful. You get, you get so much power as Victor picking up a Lich Bane, because every single one of your abilities you draw are, are going to end up adding to the attack damage here, the amount of damage that you're able to put out uh, through your Q, right? Because it's already an auto attack amplifier. And on top of that, getting the extra damage from the Lich Bane, which means it's about as strong as throwing out a Death Ring. Which you can hit some, you can kill somebody in two abilities. Yeah, and it being having that extra damage, it's just, you'd be able to blow up so many people. Uh, and he's even looking towards building the Death Cat next. He's got the Voids, he's got the uh, Needlessly Large Rod and that Amp Tome looking towards, again, that. Um, the death cap as his third item that is going to be a massive power spike for this victor who is who is so far ahead once again who is aki has not died yet in this game he is 5-0-5 as one of the best kdas in the series that we have seen so far and this guy is is lighting up the rift with his play yeah it's been it's been beautiful to watch him uh use this victor to just shove in repeatedly into these turrets, uh, crashing wave after wave down onto Ball State. There's a bit of skirmish. <laughs> Away from these fights as IUI is rotating around the map. 
Ooh, and there goes the tower going down on the bot side. Poor Godsay being caught in the back like that. They could end it here. You could almost feel Shia Surprise kind of giving up in that fight just at the end. He could have gone up for an auto attack and probably come out on top, but he, he just didn't. Yeah, being able to pick up those last Baron minions could mean the end for BSU. Unless they're able to pull off something really impressive in this Baron pit, I'm not entirely sure if they're going to be able to come back because they're so far behind. Right now, they're 12,000 gold behind, so and that's very, very sizable. That's an extra item per, per member of the team. So it's hard to actually be able to play safe even when the lead is that expansive. That was a really important pickoff too. Looks like they're trying to find uh, trying to find Coolbird in the top lane. Coolbird's just gonna nope out of there. Just take off running. But yeah, no, removing Aki from that from that fight was so key because he's able to put down so much damage since most of BSU's team is very squishy. There there's not a whole lot of tank on their side. I mean IUPUI has the Nautilus, right? They are my apologies. Uh, BSU has the Nautilus, which which is fairly tanky, but when you have people like Nami and Caitlyn, there's not a whole lot they can do if someone can just shoot a line straight to the back line and, and blow them up. And Victor, too, who can just throw it straight through all of your tanks and you can't really do anything about the damage except the sidestep. And with his ultimate two being able to burst you down on top of that, it's it's so brutal, especially once you get a Victor Fett. Yeah, yeah. One thing to notice, we do have full ultimates up. It looks like the ultimate from CLG is going to have to be spent. Yeah, he got knocked out by those sprints coming from the second. Well, there's so much damage from the second. He's trying to take down that middle tier. 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 Yeah, it, it looks like it's just going to be a free inhibitor turret, or a free inhibitor for the side of IUPUI for now. There's not, there's just not a whole lot they're able to do. Uh, they don't have the firepower, they don't have the tank. 
they they need one of those things and they don't have enough of either right when you have nautilus who can dive in what can he do if he doesn't have any follow-up And that was a little bit of a late reaction from Durls. It's like he <laughs> saw Dreyer, went, eh, yeah, sure, I'll go for it. And by then he then he realized it was three <laughs> Dancing around the map like ballerinas. I mean, they were everywhere all the time. Yeah, I, 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 I was doing a fantastic job playing, playing around the map, map and playing, playing into, into their, 